All right, quick look at how to draw a sphere. Basically, we'll go here to select the lathe tool. That's the default object when you just start it curvy. And uh, we can go to the left view. If you messed with the view before, maybe you want to reset it. So you can click on the left or any of the view names and select uh, reset all views. And then just draw something that remotely looks like a semicircle. When you let go, it will build a surface of revolution that is centered along this axis, not necessarily the vertical axis. It does take the first point and the last point of your curve and go and the axis goes through is a line going straight through these two points, start point to end point. But what we can do next is change this curve into a better one, like into a perfect semicircle. What you do is you right click on the uh, curve you just drew and that way it turns it yellow to show that it's been highlight it's been selected and you can go to the m curve menu now and select semicircle that will force this to be a semicircle still going through that same start and end point doesn't matter if it's slightly tilted though it's still a perfect circle or semicircle and therefore the surface of revolution is now a perfect um, sphere and when you right click outside it will go out of the yellow back into the orange mode which means we have still selected the sphere but it's no longer editing the curve and at this point we are ready to start painting on it now you can paint in a couple of different ways you can select the paintbrush and perhaps adjust a little bit on the size select the color select the opacity select the shape of the brush dabs and just paint right on it now, perhaps a more sophisticated way would be to actually paint uh, with a, in a different program and then map that right onto it. And so one thing you can do is you can go to Dog Waffle, send this current image into Dog Waffle, or you might have started in Dog Waffle. In fact, that's what I did here, is I just rendered something with one of the many filters, and I can save that to uh, a BMP file or a Targa file or some other formats. And then when you go here, you can double click the uh, or right click uh, the the color map and select it so this is one one that I had saved a little bit earlier and there it is I'm going to select this one so it's now mapping that right on there and I've, of course <coughs> once it's been loaded I can also select it uh, with other maps like the bump map in this case which means that if I go to single view here we can see the bumps for the bright spots and adjust those as well all right. <clears throat> now the real beauty is that I don't have to save it through a file. If I start here, I can go and send it to Dog Waffle. Uh, let's say uh, currently my active texture is the base color, so I can send that into Dog Waffle and it will send it there directly. And I can go and modify it. Maybe I just replace it with something totally different. Uh, let's say, for instance, the uh, the cross contours. Let's do something like this. Save that. Here's a uh, quick look at the whole picture. And just keep it running, but switch over to Curvy. Let's center it. And now here we can go and select Fetch Dog Waffle Buffer from for the into the active. And same thing with the texture map, uh, the bump map, if you want it there too. Or we can even replace that and get rid of it. Uh, you can select it into the displacement map or what we call curvy map and that's really an impressive one because here you have all sorts of distortions you can apply to that surface let's move it and so that creates a totally different dimension and a lot more complex shapes you can create with that